I am uh, Councillor Mohammed Butt, leader of Brent Council, and my pro uh, professional address is Brent Civic Centre. I'm Councillor Kruppeshwani. I'm the Cabinet Member for Adults Health and Wellbeing at Brent Council. Uh, my professional address is the Brent Civic Centre. And in front of you, you should have uh, Volume 1, uh, and if you look at page 45 to 60, can you confirm that that is yeah. the evidence that you need to come to the Commission? Yeah, that's correct. Correct, yeah. Um, I wanted to just ask you first of all briefly about uh, population. Uh, leaving aside any other issues about inaccuracy of estimates and figures, can you help us with the impact that you said the development we all know common for our brother's population? Well, at the moment, the, the, the figures of the population for Brent are on the region of about 320,000. And uh, uh, with the old development coming in, uh, I mean, it's going to be about um, 24,000 homes coming in there. And, and that is going to have a massive impact on, on, on the potential uh, to skew things uh, around health and transport and the, and the infrastructure that is in Brent and surrounding areas. And can you have, do you have any awareness of whether or not uh, those figures can be factored into the sample proposals? Uh, as f f from what I've seen, absolutely not. They, they, they haven't been factored in. I mean, th 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 there is so much regeneration that is going on in Brent as well, right? That that, that would need to be factored in as well. I mean, it's it's just a, a amazing the, the numbers of people that will be coming in the next 10 to 15 years ago. And what do you think the impact that will have on the services that need? If you take a look at what's happening already in Brent, right, the, the, the health service and the health needs are not fully being met as well. So, so if, if, the, if the population figures continue in the current trend of, of increasing, I mean, we're going to be having at least you know, 5,000 people coming in the next few years in the Wembley area alone. And we're predicting another 25,000 people in, in the next 15, 20 years. Uh, and it, I, I don't even think those figures have been factored in, and so so the, the impact is going to be absolutely horrendous. It's going to put m more pressures and strains on the services that we are uh, we're facing in Brent. And one of the, the most difficult issues, of course, the closures, the closures of the A and E's, and we know about the CMH and Hampton Hospital closing together. Yeah. And we know the views because we've heard them this morning. The CCGs and trusts that the closures didn't have any impact on performance. Can you help us with your views? Yeah, just just to add uh, and answer that question uh, in relation to the population changes as well. Um, if we take uh, take it beyond A and E as well, looking at things like GP capacity uh, and the health and social care infrastructure as a whole, uh, we need to make sure that capacity uh, is available in all sectors of healthcare, not just A and E, um, but it needs to be factored into the amount of GPs that we have. Uh, across the borough as well. Uh, that includes recruitment policies for GPs. Are there enough GPs? Uh, from what we have seen, uh, the GPs around the borough uh, are getting closer to retirement age as well. Uh, so there are massive infrastructure problems uh, in trying to recruit the GPs that we need to meet our population demands. Um, in terms of the closures and the pressure on Northwick Park, yeah. um, do you have any view about how it is performing at the moment? Um, the, figures, <coughs> the figures show that uh, Norfolk Park is uh, consistently above, uh, ab amongst the worst performing A&Es across the country. Uh, and we were under the impression uh, that that might be mitigated by the expansion of uh, bed capacity at Norfolk Park, uh, but the trend seems to have uh, continued across the same, uh, across the same level. Uh, A&E waiting times are still uh, consistently uh, poorly performing uh, at Norfolk Park Hospital. And um, what's your view about accessibility in Norfolk Park for residents particularly in the south of the borough? Uh, for residents south of the borough, uh, Norfolk Park A&E in particular uh, is furthest away from them. Obviously Central Middlesex Hospital which had a, an A&E hospital. Uh, and was operational during the daytime uh, would be closer for patients um, who are living south of the borough uh, and uh, for those further south of the borough towards Kilburn, uh, St Mary's would be the most appropriate hospital for those patients. Do you have a view of the wisdom of having closed the CMH uh, and Hatsmith and Hatsmith and A&E? 
I think uh, it's been touched on slightly before. If you take if you take a look at the the, the social makeup of uh, the Stonebridge and Halsden and Kensal Green areas, we're, that, that those are some of the most deprived areas that we have in Brent. Some of some of the most poorest paid individuals who live in those areas as well, yeah. and, and they and, and they have some of the the the, uh, the most acute health needs as well and making these people travel that much more, f more further over to uh, uh, Northwick Park when the transport infrastructure isn't in place right, they, they, uh, they have to take a minimum of two buses to get over there from, uh, from Stonebridge uh, 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 and the, the 18 bus and then trying to change over at Sudbury or, or even Wembley it, it, it's an absolute nightmare and uh, the, uh, even having discussions uh, um, uh, of trying to persuade people to use um, uh, the tubes and trains right, but if, if they've if they are some of the most poorest paid individuals that we have in society and, and forcing them to use more expensive modes of transport is, is having a negative impact on, on their health outcomes and, 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 and their social outcomes as well. So just, just, to add, just to go back to your question as well, um, you talked about the view, our view on the closure of the two A&Es at Central Middlesex and Hemsworth and Fulham. Um, to us, we, we think it should not have been closed, uh, especially with uh, two, two caveats I'd add to that, is the out-of-hospital strategy and GP opening times. The out-of-hospital strategy is, is supposed to be where the bulk uh, of uh, A&E admissions are, are supposed to be mitigated. If these are not ready, it does not make sense to close C at Central Middlesex and H&F uh, A&E uh, when it was closed because quite clearly from what we have seen out of hospital services are not ready to pick up that slack. I wanted to ask a little bit about urgent care centres. Um, are you over, do you have a clear idea of what an urgent care centre is to provide? Uh, yes, I, I, I do have somewhat of a clear idea of what urgent care centres are to provide. Um, I'm, not I'm, I'm sure that the general public do not, uh, and uh, going by some case studies and what residents have told us, uh, I'm not sure GPs are sure either. Can I just... So when Dr. Armour says that the UCC's at H, Hanscom Hospital and, and Central Middlesex now offer a much specification, is that something that's understood by the okay, residents? Okay. Just going back on the, on, the, on the first question and linking the, 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 the second question together, uh, many of my residents in Brent uh, uh, come from uh, you know, outside of, of outside of England because 64% of the population is made up of BME popular of, uh, individuals, and m m most of them. Uh, do have problems trying to understand how to access GP services anyway, and and then, and then trying to explain to them uh, that uh, you've got the urgent care centres. Uh, and I, I can assure you, uh, even I struggle to understand what a, 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 an urgent care centre provides. I've had people phoning me up trying to find out whether or not, right. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, Central Middlesex does X-rays. Can they go in there just for uh, a, a quick check up? Anything, right? The the, the communication ha hasn't worked, right? Well, pe people just do not understand what these urgent care centres are, and and it hasn't been done in, in, in a in a manner or, or method that that is understood by the by, by the people of Brent because most of them do have English as a sec second language, and uh, and their their access to health services in their uh, in their countries. Is not exactly the same to what we experience in this country, and, and they do not understand uh, the, the changes that have been implemented. And we need to make sure that that message is got through to them: what, what they can do uh, at an urgent care centre, what, what hospital is for, and, and, and what the role of the GP is. Because uh, even trying to get through to a GP sometimes can be difficult. So, if we know that CMH has a 24-hour urgent care centre, uh, and you've touched on this in your submission, why is it you say that there's underuse of Do you want to say? Uh, yeah, and it's, there's two problems. One is, uh, one is referral uh, and the second is about information. Uh, so I can give a particular example because it involved my mother who uh, fell over uh, on the driveway and uh, damaged her hand. Uh, she went to the GP. Rather than being referred to the urgent care centre for uh, an x-ray, she was referred to A&E at Norfolk Park. Now, what this tells me is that there is a problem uh, in making sure that people are referred to the right place by professionals. Now, if professionals are struggling to understand 
where to send people, what hope do the general public have? Absolutely. Um, if there's confusion, um, what about this issue? One of the later witnesses suggests that they should be renamed minor accident treatment centres or something similar. Do you have a view about whether that's sensible? Uh, I can't comment on that particular phrase, but I think uh, it's in our interest between the council, residents and uh, our partners at the NHS to see if there are ways we can improve that messaging too. We have the avenues, we have the Brent magazine, we have children's centres, libraries, schools where we can help deliver that message, but we need to come to that common view and we're happy to help with that. Do you have a view about the co-location of urgent care centres and AMEs is, is, is appropriate or not? Uh, co-location is uh, has a potential to deliver the best outcome uh, because what it means is that a person can go to a single place and can be triaged and depending on what their need is they can directly be sent to an, uh, the urgent care centre part of the business or, uh, or to the A&E side. Can I, can I just add um it does actually go back to the, the, the consultation process around the shaping a healthy future. Uh, uh, a lot of um, um, input was made into the, in, into the process uh, about the, some of the concerns that were, um, uh, that were actually now being raised now. And, and those concerns were, were raised at that time as part of the process. And, uh, and as far as I can see, none of those concerns have been taken into, into consideration in, in, in taking things forward. Right? So, 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 and, and, it's, and it causes me even more concern right, that we're sitting here two, three years after the, the, the whole process, that, that we're talking about the exact same concerns Right, that haven't been, still haven't delivered. We've still got a, a, a system at the moment that's not actually delivering. Right, uh, the, the A and E d uh, uh, waiting times are absolutely horrendous. I mean, I, I know Krupich has had his own personal uh, um, um, uh, issues as well. But, and I, I mean, I've been there personally myself, trying to wait for uh, uh, an appointment to see, get, get my hand seen to as well. And it's, uh, the, the people are sometimes are just sitting there trying to understand what, what what's happening. Uh, um, the, 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 the flow of, the, of information to, 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 uh, to those people who are waiting there is, does, is lacking. Uh, and if, if, they're, if they haven't got information while they're at the A&E departments or the urgent care centres, uh, they haven't been given the information prior to it as well. It's, it's the whole thing needs to be looked at in order to be, for it to be redefined right, in, in a way that people will understand and people understand what these centres are for. Because uh, if people like myself are struggling to understand what services are provided, what they're there for, right, and, and, I, and it bothers me that, that you know my residents are going to, going to suffer. Yeah, I just want to move on and ask very briefly about bed space. Mm -hmm. I can't believe the changes to any of the plans for a reduction of two beds across the region, but with mm -hmm. sort of part of what we've heard expanded. Uh, what's your view about whether that's sufficient? Do you know? I'll come back in a uh, on, on the bed spaces at Norfolk Park, um, I think the, uh, the hospitals trust themselves at a recent scrutiny meeting said there's insufficient uh, bed space uh, at the centres. From a, from a non-clinical uh, position, I can't uh, comment on, uh, on that aspect, but they have already commented, and if that's what the experts there are saying, uh, that there isn't enough bed capacity at Norfolk Park Hospital, uh, then uh, I, I will have to trust their judgment on that and I, I would uh, strongly uh, suggest that there would need to be more bed space if that's what the experts on the ground are telling us. Can, can I just, uh, can I just, just on, the, on, the, on the bed spaces? Look, uh, we've, been, we've been promised bed spaces in Northwick Park uh, and do you know what? I haven't seen any of those bed spaces materialise. Uh, uh, there's figures of 50 bed spaces that we're supposed to be having in, in Northwood Park. There's 80 that we were mentioning in, 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 um, uh, uh, in the Scruton Committee. Uh, I've, I've seen different reports. Uh, I don't even know. I don't even know right which figures these people are referring to now, right? Uh, are they re re referring to the original proposals uh, of the transfer of, of the services to Northwick Park where 50 or 60 spaces were supposed to be there? Are we now talking about the, 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 the shortage of beds that they, were, they promised in, uh, as part of the consultation process or are we talking about the, the beds that Mr David Cameron is supposed to have promised us? Nothing. Right? Uh, th there is no clear figure of what we've been promised, what's supposed to be in there uh, and, uh, and uh, honestly, right, the, uh, the only people it's going to 
Ealing bad is, is the people of Brent and Ealing and Harrow and Hounslow and everywhere else because they do not know where to go uh, uh, for, for, for some of the services they need. Where possible, people do not need to go to uh, need to go to A and E if uh, if they really have to. Now. You and I, uh, we don't want to go to hospital, we only want to go if, if there's something wrong. Uh, so that's the premise that we should uh, all work to and as mentioned earlier uh, by uh, one, of the, uh, one of the evidence givers, um, you know, A&E should be a last resort. Uh, on the out of hospital strategy, uh, a draft form uh, was produced in 2012. As far as I'm aware, uh, an actual out-of-hospital strategy never came back for decision and there is no out-of-hospital strategy. So the basis on which the changes have been operating, uh, I can't see them. I can't see what is supposed to replace A&E closures and that's what frightens me the most. Can I just... <clears throat> <clears throat> you are correct that, that we, we, we are uh, generally uh, broadly in support of, uh, of the changes that, the, that, uh, that, that, that were put forward. But the caveats were right, that everything else needs to be in place before you start taking and making these changes. Right? And, uh, and I'm sorry, right, the changes and the, uh, uh, that were required are not in place, especially around, uh, 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 around uh, making sure the GPs have the support and, and, and the capacity to take on some of those services. It's not in, not in place. Uh, the, the, uh, the transport and the infrastructure that we were speaking, that we're speaking about, that that was uh, supposed to have been taken on board. I'm sorry, it ha it, 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 nothing's come out of it. Uh, uh, the number of buses that, that still go to no uh, Northwick Park uh, ha hasn't materialised. The, uh, the changes... It, it hasn't happened. Um, yeah, uh, if I did something like that in the council, right? I mean, I, I would be held to account, right? Everything that we do has to have a quality impact assessment on, 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 on the outcomes and the needs of, of those individuals that I'm providing a service for, right? So how can we move forward in trying to deliver a service for, for you know 320,000 people of Brent without having the positive outcomes and and having a, a, a proper plan of execution as well? I'm sorry, it's it's it's, it's it isn't there and it's failing and it's it's hurting my residents. We are we are hearing from uh, residents about how difficult it is to get a GP appointment. I understand that that's a national problem as well, but it is local, uh, and it's what residents are telling us as well. Um, so GPs do do not have the capacity to meet the current population need uh, in Brent. Um, in terms of the uh, the GP hubs, yes. how will that help? Will that help at all? Uh, it, it, it would help because it would mean that <coughs> there are extended uh, GP opening hours. Uh, but again, the problem does come back to what Councillor Butt said about information and about people not knowing about it and people don't know where to go. And once they're, once they're in a situation of need, rather than you know try and find out uh, where to go, the hospital is the easiest option. Uh, it is there, the buildings, the buildings are there, and it means that people are going there uh, because they cannot get the appointments locally when, when and where they need to. Uh, would you ask a little bit about the interface between local authority yeah. and health services? Because obviously you're coming at it from a local authority perspective. Yeah. Many of the services that are involved in this transition will presumably involve local authority in yeah. What input have you been asked to give? How good is the liaison being between the health service and, and, and the buyer? Yeah. Uh, I think the governance arrangements are the most worrying thing about, uh, or, or mentioned another worrying thing about oh, out of hospital, the out of hospital strategy, but it's another uh, worrying aspect of all of this. Uh, it feels to us like a lot of these changes have happened at a regional level, uh, at the northwest London regional level. Now, the, our local government structure has meant that the 
ability for us to have uh, a leadership input uh, into this uh, has been very limited. It's been done by scrutiny committees, it's been done by joint overview and scrutiny committees rather than through leadership and rather than being co-produced so that we can come to something uh, that we can work with the NHS on. Locally, there, there are uh, we do have now in place health and wellbeing boards. We are looking uh, at, at a better care fund, um, which has been something that has come through uh, on, a, on a national basis that we're working through locally. Uh, but the governance arrangements, as Councillor Butt said, if uh, if we did, if we made a decision uh, that impacts on residents that wasn't working, we'd be held accountable for it. Uh, the same doesn't exist, uh, and what worries me is how constitutionally this has come about and how in the first place uh, the com clinical commissioning groups were, were put together on this regional basis and what is the legitimacy for rolling this programme out across the whole of North West London. Can, can I just add something on to that? Do, do, do you know, the, the, um, the, the, the process, of, I mean, uh, Krubish touched on sort of regional issues, right? but, I th but when you lump together, uh, you know, Brent, Ealing, Harrow, Hounslow, uh, and all these boroughs, you, ha you, you have to take into account, right, that each borough is, is, is different, quite unique, and, and, and trying to provide services across a, a wide area without understanding the demographics the, and the, 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 and, and, and the, and the uh, impact uh, uh, and the outcomes of those individuals that, 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 that you're trying to provide those services for. I don't think that enough work has been done at that council level. Right? It's, it's, too, it's too wide a level to, to, to have a broad brush approach for, for, for this kind of services that we're trying to provide in, 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 in Brent and in the other areas. Can I just ask you one final question? It's, it's, it's quite palpably clear that you're very passionate about this uh, and that this is something which matters. Yeah. Um, what do you feel you need to say? What would you say if you had a single message to give to someone? What would you ask them to do? What, what should happen? For them? What should happen? Well, the, the simple message is right, uh, that the, the, uh, the people of Brent and, uh, and our surrounding areas actually need a health service and uh, 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 that actually delivers for them. Uh, there, there, is, there is no way that you can have a health service uh, uh, operating out of one hospital, one major hospital, trying to deliver for you know four or five different boroughs. It's it's uh, it's not going to work. The, uh, and the uh, and the GPs right need the help and support to make sure that they can actually deliver some of those services that's supposed to be farmed out to them. Uh, is, is, uh, th th there isn't there. The, the infrastructure in, in order to uh, uh, to help those residents to get to those services isn't there as well. The, the communication has been so lacking. It's, uh, Right, it's just, uh, I, I, I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm getting lost for words because I, I do feel quite passionate about it. And, uh, uh, and if, if I had failed in my, in, in my role in delivering services, I can assure you, uh, when it comes to 2018, right, the residents will speak right, and, and, and I won't be sitting here. Yeah, the, the only me message I'd add in addition to it is, um, Sorry, is uh, is to pause and pause and reflect. Um, I think it's it would be dangerous to still continue uh, down the shaping a healthier future route without sorting out the out of hospital and the extended GP opening hours. Uh, we need to be at a place when A and E capacity uh, is telling us uh, that it's okay to continue. We're, we're not at that place. It's going the wrong way at the moment. A and E waiting times are going up, not down. We are we are massively uh, below the, over the four hour waiting time for our residents at Norfolk Park, especially. Thank you. I'll be grateful if you wait there. Then any questions? Can you hear me? Um, I think I might be asking rather a waffly question. I can't try try not to. I'm, I'm trying to get an understanding of how things work and how things are changed if you need to make changes. And um, you are our representative politicians. Yes. Yeah. And I don't have any national politicians to ask. So, yeah. ask you. Yes. so my understanding is, say you have a project, and you do have large projects, you have housing space and so on to build, uh, etc., involving many millions of pounds. And if you would see, for example, that in the middle of a housing project, that for some reason I know there's a 
it goes over an earthquake region or something major is happening or it's not going to be filled with its aims. What are the processes by which you change that project? I mean, do you wait till the next election and you're out? Or, 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 or how would that be done? I mean, do you listen to your residents? Do you have an inquiry? Do you get some consultants? Do you, what, how does that work? Can I, yeah. As, uh, as part of any project, right, uh, we, we have um, uh, points along the, uh, the process where we uh, take, t take stock, we reflect, we, we, we uh, review and analyse right, the, the process that we're following. And if, uh, if there are sort of obstacles and barriers in the way, right, we, we tackle those straight away. Uh, and we, uh, uh, as part of that, uh, 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 in local government, we, we have to engage and consult with our residents, stakeholders and, and, and partners involved. Uh, and that's the way you do things, right? And you've heard Krupish touch on the, the, uh, the aspect of what engagement there has been. There has been sort of a very limited uh, engagement with us. Uh, um, we've had uh, uh, sort of one or two presentations at one of our scrutiny committee meetings uh, about the shaping a healthier future. Uh, and you know, as, as I said, concerns were raised and uh, the pro process has been followed. But nothing has been, uh, um, well, no one ha has actually listened to the concerns that we've been raising. Uh, uh, I, we even had a submission to the Independent Reconfiguration Panel. We, 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 uh, that was in 2013. Uh, uh, we've been trying to uh, ear those uh, concerns and highlight those issues. Right? And once again, uh, I was just saying to Krupa Shirley, right, uh, going through it again, uh, everything that we've put forward, right, nothing has been addressed. It's exactly the same. Uh, nothing has... Uh, you know, even even a slight deviation, you, know, you, you would have been sort of you know happy to see something there. But like I said, two years ago, July 2013, right, uh, um, submissions were put in, uh, and we're here in May 2015, you know, nearly two years down the road, and it's it, nothing has changed from that uh, uh, submission. So, gosh, that doesn't give you much. <laughs> so, who, as as local politicians? Who do you see as your direct contact then in the NHS? To whom you appear? Say if there's one, one particular point you want to change. For example, I don't know, maybe could they hold on to a service for X amount of time? Yeah. Who do you approach? Who do they? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm the Cabinet Member for Adults Health and Wellbeing at Brent Council, uh, also supported by uh, Directors of Public Health and Adult Social Care. The problem is that the decision-making structures for what we have in place are not coterminous. So our boundaries are the same as Brent Clinical Commissioning Group. However, most of the changes made, or the whole of the so, so, uh, Shaping a Healthier pro Program project is a regional project. Mm. There is no equivalent or no individual no that problem. matches from a local government perspective uh, in terms of governance arrangements to the structure that has led to this decision making in the NHS. So it's a bit like a, a vehicle that's been set off for which there are no... Yeah, yeah. Am, am I allowed to refer to previous evidence givers' answers? Uh, yeah. So... Um, can, can I just to ask you to be succinct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Dr. Mark Spencer, when he gave his evidence uh, and you probed him about what's happening in local areas, said that's for local areas to decide. But shaping a healthier future and the programme in changing the hospital services uh, was as a result of the regional services that he led. Yeah. So what that tells me is regionally he'll make the changes. What happens locally is up to you, Burroughs. Sort it out yourself. As we say. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, yes, so, um, uh, I just wanted to, this is fairly brief, but, uh, well, fairly focused anyway, I hope it's brief, but um, it's um, following on what you said about not receiving any out of our strategy. Um, yeah. Now, presumably, it, any out of our strategy would necessarily involve a liaison with social services, would necessarily involve a liaison with the council. And, and, and whatever services you were required to provide as part of that. Yeah. So that's quite shocking in its own way, but that raises the thing, you re referred briefly to the Better Care Fund. Yes. 
Um, now, again, the Better Care Fund is a, is a pot of money that's been put aside. Some of it's been top sliced from NHS hmm. budgets, and some of it's from presumably the ever decreasing amount of money that you're giving for local government. Absolutely. But, I mean, is, if, if the out of hour strategy isn't there, how can a Better Care Fund strategy be drawn up? Um, that's going to actually integrate that and go further and actually build a, a, a broader support for, for vulnerable people in, uh, in, in, in your area. Yeah, so um, what, what I'd say, to, well, Better Care Fund uh, has come out separately and much later in the process, uh, which is why, uh, why I mentioned about pausing and making sure that things are ready out of hospital before we make the changes to these hospitals and to see if, if it works, frankly, because if it doesn't work, people still need a service somewhere. Uh, and uh, A&E uh, is still an option, but let, let's see if we get to the point where people don't need it before we look at configuring A&E services at hospital. Uh, now, with the Better Care Fund, we are working to uh, help aid the discharge process, looking at reablement, making sure that people don't have to go back to hospital once they have been, uh, and making sure that at-home support is there when they are uh, discharged. We're looking at uh, whole systems integration for patients over uh, over 75, and so there are things in place that are being that are just starting, uh, but we are not at that point where those things are entrenched in our services, so that we can start changing services at the bigger, wider Northwest London region. So, a does that potentially give you a little bit of leverage to sort of say, well, come on, where's this out of hospitals? Yeah strategy maybe, go back and actually press the harder for this, because obviously it's something you need as a borough if you're going to take your responsibilities for that, that side of things seriously, or if they're going to be able to count on you doing what they expect you to do, rather than just assuming somehow you're going to work it out. And secondly, um, secondly I forgot what the other part of the question was, that'll do. <laughs> Yeah, as I said, it, it, this, is, this is part of an open and transparent decision-making process. And the reason why I did mention about the uh, out of hours hospital uh, strategy not being finalised or appearing not to come anywhere back for a decision, uh, if we take it back to our council decision-making processes, when we make draft strategies and we bring, and bring it out for consultation, uh, we expect the results to come back, we expect there to be a paper trail and we expect there to be a decision yeah. uh, and to be held to account for that decision as well. Um, so that's what we're asking for, uh, openness and transparency, see what they are working on, what basis, uh, what strategy are they working on, where's the final document that has been approved by the clinical commissioning groups in the relevant areas. So on, just this is the final part and the second part of the question, on what you can see so far of what's available through the Better Care Fund, of what, what's actually in the pot in terms of the availability of resources to the, to the borough, do you think there's enough money there to make this work or do you think this is something which is just a wing and a prayer and they're just hoping somehow they're going to get away with it? A wing and a prayer. At the moment I would say there's, there's not enough money to make the whole thing work uh, because Health and, health and social care needs to be looked at the health and social care economy. Now if you look at how our funding has been uh, affected as a, as a local council, uh, we are the primary deliverer of uh, social care uh, and it's not just social care, we have to look at other things like housing which impact health as well. Uh, so as a health and social care economy, uh, I, would, I would argue the council is chronically underfunded. Uh, and that is likely to be the case uh, at least for the next uh, five years as well. Uh, so funding, I would say, does not, uh, it does not match up to the ambitions in this, uh, in this case. And what I would say about uh, whether it's a wing and a prayer, it, it is precisely that. But that's, what we, that's why I'm saying we need to have that out of hospitals strategy and the opening GP hours in place and then we can see from that whether it's working or not, whether we need to make those changes uh, at hospital. We're doing things the other way around in this process, uh, and, that's, that's and that right. concerns me. Absolutely right. I'll leave it there. Councillors, thank you both very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yay.